Okay, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? Okay, here. Hello. Bonjour. Hello, everybody. Well, it's Christoph and Dagmavi again. We are in Yaoundé, Cameroon. Yes. And we had lunch. It's the first day of the workshop. Yeah. We had an amazing, an amazing, amazing lunch. lunch to be specific. Yes. And um, right now, the participants go on with creating their tiny little games based on a fork, a spoon, and other funny stuff. <laughs> And, um, and their brain, yeah. And their brain, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. And um, that leads me to the question, to be honest. Um, not only, you know, we, we start with video, or we talk about video games at the end, so everyone expects that yeah. we do video games. But what we're doing right now is we do very easy things. So, in example, um, a game which is based on a spoon, a fork, and an adhesive or something like that. So, what do you think? What is the best way of teaching people? I think like the, this this uh, this particular technique is really interesting because a lot of people are skeptical somehow, mm -hmm. and some of them, whenever you say that, when you, whenever you mention the term games, the first thing that comes to people's mind is video games. Yes, and there is this notion, and like you, you don't blame it because like you have millions and millions of video games made, being made every now and then. And it would be somehow normal that people think yeah. games are about video games. Yeah. But like that's giving them this option of using any day material without even telling them what game design is all about and to allow them or to let them make a game and let, they, yeah. they, in the process they kind of find out that making a game is something natural. And it's yes. Not, Yes. It's not like nuclear, nuclear physics or no. it's not that something you learn but like you already have it, you're doing it yes. on a daily basis yes. but not yes. consciously. Yes. So this, this particular technique of giving them a random materials and asking them to make a game somehow empowers them and gives them this insight that ah, I've been making games all my life but now I yes. kind of do it consciously yeah. and which is actually a good way of teaching people how to make a game. I agree. I guess that that's the... the, the um, one of the most uh, important parts in game design is that people understand we just talk about human behavior. We do not, at the end, we do not manipulate people. We use their behavior. Of course, we try to get into this and use it, but it's not, we do not change their, their brain in one or the other way. We try to address uh, uh, human behavior. Or like Betty said once uh, a couple of weeks ago, she said, humans were created to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I guess the other thing is you need to forget all this graphic stuff and everything else because that only, uh, sometimes for me it's like most of the games that I know from the professional game industry perspective are really boring. You have nice graphics an example, but the game itself is very boring because um, it seems that they are more and more uh, orientated on, on yeah, kind of how it looks like, yeah. but not how it is to play it. And um, that's something that I, I, I really cannot understand because finally gaming or in playing is something that you do very often. And, and, and as you said, um, maybe it's like, um, maybe you do elements of this all the time. So like when people tell me, what is gamification? And I tell them it's about using game mechanics in a non-game context, they always come up with this idea, wow, that's a very special idea. Yeah. That's an, like you do something artificial. Like you, but I guess most of the people, they already do kind of gamification in their lives because it's just the way how to, to be more engaged or more, be more motivated in, in what you are and what you think. But thinking about this group, and we did a lot of workshops together right now and traveling more or less all around Africa. So what do you think is the, um, what is the most difficult thing for the participant? What is the most challenging thing for the participant in this project actually like we, we just mentioned it it is like they need to aw be awakened mm -hmm. from their previous misconception mm -hmm. of what a game is mm -hmm. so the first thing they come up with is a story mm -hmm. so we've played tetris like there is no actual like there is no like uh, uh, fictional story behind yeah. it it's just boxes being yeah. put in a you know in order yeah. so the first the first difficulty you find with participants is they kind of like whenever you tell them to make a game, mm -hmm. they will worry more, not on the experience, but like the storytelling. Yes. So that's the same thing like we have faced now, like yes. today. We had five teams and two of them, they were, they, they, were, they had really this big creative mind. Yes. And they were creating these scenarios. Yes. But there was no gaming, gaming experience. There was yes. no actual interaction. And yes. There's yes. no yes. feedback yes. or progress. Yes. Yes. And that's actually, 
the biggest challenge everyone has. We're not saying that graphics doesn't take that doesn't help or a story doesn't help. They play a lot of part. Like they are part of the game, like the game element. They can't be, they can somehow increase the experience and the user engagement. But going down and talking about the what a game really is, I mean about the mechanics. It takes them a while to understand. Like I, it actually, it, it actually took me a while to understand. It yes. Well. Yes. So. That's why, like, starting the workshop by letting them make a game, yes. the base approach, so that they can be somehow, uh, under, like, be awakened from this misconception. Yes, that yes, yes I agree. To, yeah. yeah, even then, you know, I think, as I said in the workshop today, I believe there's always a story. Even Tetris, there is a story. It's a story that you create in that yeah. moment. It's, it's the, the, the difference is not that Tetris doesn't have any story. It's just the story is created while you're playing the game because that's your experience. So um, therefore, it's the question: What kind of what what does a story mean, or what do we define? How do we define the, the term of a story? And um, the other aspect that I think it's quite important is that um, the um, the story isn't can be a very important thing, but you play a game, not a story. Yeah. And that's something like remember the first game that we created in Addis Ababa, the Battle of the Times. Finally, it was playing a story, not yeah. playing playing a game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and that that's a quite important thing. And even in the way um, um, we try to explore our environment in a game. Yeah. Like especially here, we have the situation that the um, we will create a game where people go out to the city and try out new ways of seeing the city and stuff like that. But we cannot define this. We cannot tell them this is this 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 is that. We need to create an experience that maybe they accept it like this. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I completely understand. I agree with you. And that's why, like, if we look at the video gaming industry, we are now like people are more more focusing on the graphics. Yeah, and like that. You should walk with because the cars come. I maybe they're going to stay there. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Going. So like the like, that's why like we're having this monotonous yeah. genre of games like. Everything is about like first person shooter is the same thing. It's like you yeah. kill and you win and we, with the whole concept of game design yes. is somehow being lost yeah. by our, our, like by by our, like by the game making industry like, yes. uh, sector. So people are spending more time on the graphics part, yes. the storytelling part. So we, we we almost like you play any game and the, the experience is somehow similar. Yes. Only the, maybe the imagination and like the, the what you do yes. during the gameplay is different, but like the, the progress, the measurement, the feedback, yes. like, more or less they are similar. Yes. You yes. have a bar that's always there. Whenever you get like you're losing, that bar decreases. Whenever you, you're kill, killing, you're getting points. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, yeah, yeah. This is like this is just what you see. Yes. In all the gaming. Yes. Arenas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Somehow it kills the game design or the game yes. experience. Yes, yeah, it's a bit like the McDonald's, the McDonald's of of, of uh, uh, not to play McDonald's because, but you know the fast food version of games at the end. They look nice more or less, but what you get is just something that you already know. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice because wherever you go in the world, you can go to one of these fast food restaurants and you get always the same food. You know what you can expect. Yeah. But on the other side, it's very boring because there's no new experience. And this is something that even for me is very important in this workshop seeing how they create these games and what their what their background is because you know this group like we have right now here in in, in Jao and Day is so creative yeah, and they yeah. have so many you know experiences and artists, stuff like that yeah. and artists and architects and economists it's, it's always the same thing with these groups but we need to find a way how they can become uh, a certain kind of game designer creating a game because even if they're able to do something they're going to be motivated yeah and um as they have to work for this for a long time and in their spare time, not getting paid for that, it's really uh, it's really important thing that the way how we teach it is connected to their motivation curve. Yeah. So that means that that means finally we we need to think about the uh, the elements of games or the game mechanics in a way that we use them even in the process as yeah, part of it. Yeah. That's actually like that's the beauty of it. It's like Inception. Yeah. They are going to make a game, but like. To make that game making experience much better, we need to play a game with them. Yeah. So like it's like we're doing games, and by through that game, like through the experience we're creating with the participants, yes. yes. they are going to make another game. Yes. So it's like uh, it would be really ironic if uh, we don't engage them about yeah. like the concept of game making because we'll be losers. Like we, we can't even consider ourselves as yes. game designers. Yes. We can't even make the 
engagement process for a game making workshop interesting so like in, in, a, in a way like we're also making this experience yes. for them so that they can go through this path to mastery yes. of game making yes and the only way they can showcase yes. that they have passed through this path and become masters of game making is yeah. by the game that they are going to make yes which is and the quality of the quality yes. is going to have yes yes okay so let's go back i guess they are already done yeah. with their new games and we will um, back later Okay. With new ideas, just you, you are allowed to, you should now switch off. <laughs> because you, if I do it, the finger will be in the camera. So bye bye, everybody. Three, two, two one. one. Bye. bye.